Oh my God, they've got a... Could this be the first nuclear-powered airliner? That's fantastic. Uh, a supersonic airliner that flies at three times the speed of sound runs on nuclear fusion. Stephen Dowling investigates the challenges of making airliners run on atomic power. Wow, and just, just look at the picture and what they've got artistic concepts about. They know it's they know how many passengers it's gonna carry and they know how fast it's gonna fly. It's gonna fly three times the speed of sound. And not only that, they know that its engine's gonna pitch up by 20 degrees. Now, I'm oh, sure they've not got around to making any prototypes yet, but I mean, they know how many engines it's gonna have. So, I mean, that must mean that they're gonna be building the prototypes soon, right? And look at the introduction. Wow, it could whisk you from London's Heathrow and have you stepping onto the air bridge at New York's JFK in, in about three hours. It would be no small car, luxuriously so. First class speeds over 2,000 miles per hour. Wow, this sounds amazing. It's got a name, the Falcon Flash. And it looks like something from the game franchise Halo, but could fill the whole left by supersonic Concord. Yeah, and it's got some nice images to it, but it's complete bullshit. So there's basically two ways that you can get your uh, energy out of nuclear reactors. The first one is you split up nuclei and get a load of energy out and you can use that heat to either produce electricity or to run turbines which can also produce electricity. Or you can fuse nuclei, which is incredibly technically challenging. This stuff just exudes an ignorance of an artist who has the most superficial knowledge of nuclear power and there he is making his little pictures about how this fantastic plane with well, however many one two three six engines and it's got this little sort of uh, u-shaped thing in the middle so it's the uh, it's just complete bullshit so anyway this this is his understanding of nuclear energy the invention of nuclear fission reactors brought the promise of cheap energy not just at home but to ships in the 1950s the first reactors small enough to be used on a vessel entered service and within a few years they'd shrunk that they could be used to power a submarine well that's bullshit i've been to the very first nuclear reactor and they're always small the actual core itself typically only contains between 10 and 100 kilos that sort of thing of fuel typically you can put your arms around the sort of size of the core there what's typically not so small is the shielding and the actual machinery to take the heat generated by the reactor and turn it into some sort of useful energy like electricity or something so whilst they did actually fly a reactor on one of these planes now, sure, the plane needed 11 tons of shielding. And just to put that into perspective, 10 tons is about the bomb load of a B-29 Super Fortress. That is, that's the maximum surplus weight a plane like this could carry. And there's sort of two things that you need to be shielded from. The first is the neutrons, and the second is the high-energy photons, the gammas. The high energy gammas are quite easy to stop because you just need lots of electrons, which basically means lots of mass, lots of weight. Exactly what you don't want on an aircraft. Um, but in reality, uh, gammas can be stopped by electrons. And the heavier your nuclei, the more electrons you get. So basically, it scales with mass. The more mass you have, the better your x-ray screening. So your typical piece of x-ray screening looks like that, big piece of uh, concrete. And this is what he thinks the problem with fission is. Nuclear fission, that's splitting the nuclei, produces lots of neutrons and they can be very harmful, says Weeks. Oh really? And just tell me, what do you think that fusion, that's actually joining the nuclei together, produces lots of? Yeah, neutrons, but not just neutrons, high energy neutrons, such that, and I want to make this clear, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, which uses exactly this sort of fusion to generate heat, needs quite a lot of shielding to stop those neutrons. About 5,000 tons of shielding, to be exact. And they were getting worried about 10 tons on an aircraft. And that, it must be said, is the first design for this tokamak, the first fusion-based power-generating reactor in the world. Estimated time of completion, about 2030. 
And no, this is intrinsically not a reactor design that you will ever be able to minimize because intrinsically you generate the high energy neutrons, which means you need a lot of shielding to stop them. And then he comes out with his bullshit. It's not just nuclear fission that will power vinyl's concept, however. It's common for people to hear the words nuclear power and think that it's dangerous. But in the case of nuclear fusion, it's not true. Rather than create a chain reaction like nuclear fission, fusion just fuses two atoms together into larger ones and creates energy and does not create any polluting waste products. Well, kinda. It's true that when you're on a fission reactor, as time goes on, you accumulate those decay products, which are radioactive. However, with a fusion reactor, you need screamingly radioactive fuels to begin with. The tritium that is the starting fuel here is screamingly radioactive. Vinyl's concept is not dissuaded by the fact that nuclear fusion remains a technology out of reach. Concepts like the Falcon Flash don't have to be weighed down by the limitations of tech we have today. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Part of their role is to imagine what designs might look like in the technologies we've not yet mastered. The Falcon Flash is too ambitious a design to fly with today's technology. You don't say. But aviation is littered with achievements once thought impossible. Nuclear fusion might one day join them. So they don't know whether it's possible or not, but they know how many engines it's going to have, how much they'll tilt up by, how many passengers it will carry, how fast it will fly. But in reality, it's all complete bullshit. They've just got a pretty picture and just made up some bullshit details to go with it. Well, thanks, BBC, for producing such high quality scientific content. Munchkins.